Toronto expected to be WNBA's first international expansion team. May 10, UPI, the WNBA is expected to award Toronto with an expansion team, with the new franchise set to start play in 2026. The team will be the WNBA's first franchise based outside of the United States. Sources told CBC Sports, the Toronto Star and Sports Business Journal about the move Friday. Those reports stated that Kilmer Sports Incorporated, a group headed by billionaire Larry Tannenbaum, was granted the franchise. An official announcement is expected later. The league has yet to officially announce the move, which would require a vote from the WNBA and the NBA Board of Governors, team owners. We continue to engage in productive conversations with interested ownership groups in a number of markets and the granting of any expansion teams requires a vote of the WNBA and NBA Board of Governors, a WNBA spokesperson said Friday, when asked about the reported agreement. The new WNBA team is expected to play at Coca-Cola Coliseum, an 8,000-seat venue used by Toronto's professional women's hockey league team. The WNBA added a 13th team, based in San Francisco, that will start play in 2025. WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert announced in April that Toronto, Philadelphia, Portland, Denver, Nashville, and South Florida were candidates to host a 14th WNBA team in 2026. She also said she hopes the league includes 16 teams within the next few years. Tannenbaum is a minority owner and chairman of Maple Leafs Sports and Entertainment, which controls the NHL's Toronto Maple Leafs, NBA's Toronto Raptors, Toronto FC of MLS, CFL's Toronto Argonauts and AL's Toronto Marlies. The WNBA, which currently consists of 12 teams, will start its regular season campaign next week. The Washington Mystics will host the New York Liberty in the first game of the campaign at 7 p.m. EDT Tuesday in Washington, D.C. Star rookie Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever will face the Connecticut Sun in the first nationally televised game at 8 p.m. Tuesday in Uncasville, Con. That matchup will air on ESPN2. Indianapolis, AP. Caitlin Clark walked into her new home arena Thursday night with number 22 shirts and jerseys peppered from floor to ceiling. A late arriving but still louder than usual crowd roared during her first official introduction to Fever fans. And when Clark made the layup for her first basket with 7 o'clock left in the first quarter, the applause grew. It was even louder when she completed a three-point play a few minutes later. Yes. Clark successfully navigated the city's most anticipated. Toronto The Toronto Maple Leafs fired head coach Sheldon Keefe on Thursday following another disappointing playoff exit. The Canadian press takes a look at some of the potential candidates to take over the original six franchise that hasn't won the Stanley Cup since 1967. Craig Berube the 58-year-old from Kalahua, Alta, hoisted the cup as coach of the St. Louis Blues in 2019 but was fired by the organization in December after missing the playoffs last spring. Roberto Ruano has a luxury box at Mexico City's Azteca Stadium where he and his family can watch soccer games and other events in privacy and comfort. When the stadium is handed over to FIFA for the tournament co-hosted by Mexico, Canada and the United States, Ruano expects the world soccer body to respect a deal dating from the stadium's construction six decades ago that gave box owners unlimited access to their seats for 99 years. We've already paid for the right to be there when we purchased the title and there can be no restrictions for us, says Ruano, 61, the spokesman of an association of 134 box owners. The former LSU pitcher will make his debut on the mound May 11th against the Chicago Cubs. Vancouver The Vancouver Canucks have been talking about resilience for months. On Wednesday, the team once again showed how the word has come to form part of its identity as Vancouver battled back from a three-goal deficit to edge the Edmonton Oilers 5-4 in Game 1 of their second-round playoff series. The belief is always there, said Canucks winger Dakota Joshua. Just to know that you gotta keep playing to the end, anything can happen. Vancouver hasn't always had the ability to stay compass. 
the San Jose Sharks, Chicago Blackhawks, and Anaheim Ducks hold the first three picks in the 2024 NHL Draft. Here's who they pick in latest mocks. Vancouver Edmonton Oilers star Leon Dreisettle is day-to-day -day with an undisclosed injury, says head coach Chris Knobloch. Knobloch says the Oilers coaching staff will decide Friday morning whether the 28-year-old German forward plays that evening in Game 2 of Edmonton's series with the Vancouver Canucks. Dreisettle missed practice Thursday and appeared to be laboring late in Edmonton's loss to Vancouver in Game 1 of their second-round series Wednesday. He had two assists in the game but was ill. Two players with nearly polar opposite roles are both finding ways to make key impacts for the Florida Panthers in the playoffs. Former Boston Celtics player Glenn Big Baby Davis was sentenced Thursday to 40 months in a federal prison for his participation in a scheme New York prosecutors said defrauded an insurance plan for NBA players and their families of more than $5 million. More than 20 people were convicted in the case, many of them one-time NBA players who submitted fictitious dental and medical claims to the NBA Players Health and Benefit Welfare Plan. A jury found Davis and former Detroit Piston. Minneapolis, AP, Tim Connolly made his first major move for the Minnesota Timberwolves after about six weeks on the job, a bold get of Senator Rudy Gobert that was as risky as it was unconventional. Going big has been no small part of this breakthrough season and dominant start to the playoffs for the Timberwolves. They take a 2-0 lead over Denver into Game 3 of the second round series Friday night. I think when Tim Connolly made that trade, everybody was laughing at him like, what is he? Milwaukee, AP, Milwaukee Bucks guard Patrick Beverly was suspended by the NBA on Thursday for four games without pay to begin next season for his actions during and after the final game of an Eastern Conference first round playoff series with the Indiana Pacers. The league announced the suspension and said Beverly was getting punished for forcefully throwing a basketball multiple times at spectators and an inappropriate interaction with a reporter during media availability. This suspension, 